This is the skin and body membranes. <clears throat> so let's watch first a video. Sorry. In this video, we're going to go over the types of body membranes, their structures, and the different areas in the body that they're located. Body membranes are comprised of epithelial tissue and connective tissue. And there are four types found in the body. Mucous membranes, serous membranes, synovial membranes, and the cutaneous membrane. Let's start by looking at the cutaneous membrane, which is also known as the skin. It is composed of a top layer of epithelium and a bottom layer of connective tissue. The top epithelial layer is comprised of keratinized stratified squamous epithelium in which the top superficial layers of cells are dead. And the bottom connective tissue layer is made up of connective tissue proper, which contains many collagen fibers. Mucous membranes line many passageways that open up to the external environment. Mucous membranes are also composed of epithelial and connective tissue. In many areas of the body, these membranes are covered with a mucus secreted by goblet cells that are part of the epithelial layer. Mucous membranes line the digestive tract, respiratory tract, urinary and reproductive tracts. Serous membranes line many of the body cavities that are not open to the external environment. Serous membranes are comprised of simple squamous epithelium and connective tissue, and they actually have two layers, a parietal layer and a visceral layer. In between these two layers is the serous cavity, which contains serous fluid. Serous membranes line the heart, lungs, and the abdominal cavity, and abdominal organs such as the stomach. Synovial membranes line some of the joints in the body. They are composed of connective tissue with a thin layer of synoviocyte cells. The cells secrete synovial fluid that fills the joint cavity, which helps to reduce friction. And that be the basics on the body membranes. So again, <clears throat> your body membranes, they cover your surfaces and line your body cavities and they form protective sheets around your organs. So your epithelial membrane, that's your cutaneous mucus and serous membranes, and your connective tissue membranes, those are represented by your synovial membranes. So let's um, discuss first your epithelial membranes. So when you say cutaneous membranes, yan yung ating skin, no? Because epithelial membranes, they are also called covering and lining membranes. No, again, that includes your cutaneous membrane, which is your skin, your mucous membranes, and your serous membrane, serous to. Okay, your cutaneous membrane, first is you have a superficial epidermis. That's, we've discussed this before, this is composed of keratinizing stratified, kasi nasa laba, stratified, so hindi naman siya pwede isang layer lang squamous epithelium well the underlying dermis there's what we call an underlying der dermis and it's mostly dense fibrous connective tissue for support so um your skin is exposed to air and is a dry membrane next is your mucous membrane yung mucous membrane ito yung mga nagla naglili ito yung silang nagalinya ng mga body cavities na open to something exterior like sa loob ng Yan o, daanan siya, di ba? Open to, they are open to the hollow, alam niya yung kaloob-looban. Loob-looban siya. Pero, doon sila nakaharap sa kaloob-looban. So, your hollow organs, no? They line all body cavities that open to the exterior ng hollow organs of the respiratory, digestive, urinary, and reproductive tract. So, um, they have they are composed of an epithelium resting on a loose connective tissue na tinatawag natin lamina propria. So they are contain either stratified squamous epithelium as in sa, sa mouth and esophagus or simple columnar epithelium the rest of your digestive tract. Your serous membrane naman this is composed of a layer of a simple squamous epithelium resting on a thin layer of areolar connective tissue and you have two layers of that that's your para parietal layer and your visceral layer your visceral layer ito yung nasa ang nagco-cover ng outside the organs uh, covers the outside of the organs in that cavity while your your parietal layer naman lies a specific 
portion of the wall of the ventral body cavity. Meron tayong tinatawag na serous fluid. Your serous fluid, ito, ito ay, um, it's just a scanty amount of thin clear fluid that separates the serous layers which is secreted by both membranes. And your peritoneum, no, your peritoneum, um, this is a serosa lining the abdominal cavity and covering its organs. Yung pleura, ito yung membrane na surrounding the lungs. Don't confuse this. Pleura, that's my LO, that's the membrane surrounding the lungs. Your pericardium, cardium, cardiac membrane surrounding the heart. Next is your, uh, we also have your synovial membrane. So this is composed of a soft areolar connective tissue and it contains no epithelial cells at all. It lines the uh, fibrous capsules surrounding your joints where they provide a smooth surface and secrete a lubricating fluid. So welcome to your integumentary system. Um, um, this is also called integument which simply means covering. Its functions is to protect deeper tissues from mechanical damage, chemical damage, no bacterial damage, UV radiation, thermal desiccation, no. So, aid in the body heat loss or heat retention, aids in excretion of urea and uric acid, and synthesizes vitamin D. So, basically, it's it's a covering that protects you from anything foreign, no outside, no, ng yung katawan. So, what, uh, what is the structure of the skin? Okay, first let's watch this. The skin covers the body and protects it from the external environment. It also prevents water loss, provides sensory function, plays a role in body temperature regulation, and is the site of vitamin D synthesis. The skin is composed of two layers, the outer epidermis and the deeper dermis. The dermis is connected to underlying structures via a subcutaneous tissue, the hypodermis, which is not technically considered part of the skin. The epidermis provides barrier and protection it consists mainly of the protein keratin, a tough and water-insoluble structural protein. The dermis constitutes the bulk of the skin. It provides support and flexibility. The dermis consists mainly of collagen and, to a lesser extent, elastin fibers. Loss of collagen and elastin, such as with aging, causes the skin to slack. The boundary surface between the epidermis and dermis is not flat, but wavy meaning the two tissues interlock, strengthening their connection. With age, this boundary flattens and the skin becomes more fragile. The dermis is well vascularized and contains sensory nerves, hair follicles, sebaceous glands, and sweat glands. It has two zones, the upper papillary dermis with loose connective tissue and the lower reticular dermis with denser connective tissue. The dermis houses immune cells and allows inflammatory response to activate upon exposure to invading organisms. The hypodermis is composed of loose connective and adipose tissues. This is where most of the body fat is stored. The hypodermis provides thermal insulation, padding, and serves as the body's main energy storage. The thickness and proportion of the epidermis and dermis vary greatly depending on their location on the body but the skin is classified as thick or thin based on the thickness of the epidermis alone. Thick skin is found only in areas where there is a lot of abrasion, palms, soles, digits, and has five epidermal layers. Thin skin is everywhere else and has four epidermal layers. Most cells of the epidermis are keratin producing cells or keratinocytes. New cells are constantly produced by mitotic cell division in the basal layer. They then move toward the skin surface as they age and differentiate, changing shape from cuboidal to flat. The distinct epidermal layers represent different stages of keratinocyte differentiation, from their birth to their death. The spinous layer is characterized by presence of abundant desmosomes which connect keratin filaments of adjacent cells, 
anchoring them together, providing resistance to physical stress. The granular layer is loaded with keratohyalin granules. These granules release several substances that cross-link keratin filaments, converting them into an impermeable keratin matrix. This process is known as cornification or keratinization, the result of which is the most superficial layer, the cornified layer, about 30 cells thick. These fully keratinized dead cells form the skin barrier. They are shed periodically from the surface as new cells are moving up. The entire epidermis is replaced every 30 to 40 days. The renewal process becomes slower with age, but faster in injured skin when cell proliferation is accelerated for wound healing. The epidermis also contains immune cells, touch sensory cells, and melanocytes. Melanocytes produce the pigment melanin and transfer it to the keratinocytes. The amount of melanin produced is the major determinant of skin color. Melanin synthesis is stimulated by UV light and is thought to be a protective mechanism against UV radiation damage. Okay, so, so that's an introduction to the structure of your skin. So your skin, it's made up of stratified squamous epithelium that is capable of keratinizing. So, yung, they are capable of keratinizing. That means they can be tough, no? Or they can be magahit siya, like your, mga, like your kubal, di ba? So your skin, the your skin it's made up of mostly of dense connective tissue and is fairly tear resistant so we also have your subcutaneous tissue this is essentially adipose tissue adipose means fatty tissues they anchor the skin to your underlying organs and provide a site for nutrients or fat storage and they also serve as a shock absorber and ini-insulate nila yung deeper tissues from extreme temperature. Pag masyadong nalalamigan, masyadong malamig na ang, or masyadong mainit, no? So, um, you know, basically, extreme temperature changes occurring outside your body. So, nyan. You have, first is we have your epidermis. So, your epidermis is composed of up to five later layers or strata. From the outside out, these are your stratum basale, spinosum, granulosum, lucidum, and corneum. So, don't be confused. Your stratum lucidum, si Lucy, can only be found in your thick skin. No? And like all other epithelial tissues, the epidermis is a vascular. So, it has no blood supply of its own. So, di ba? Kaya nga yung pagtao pag nag-shave daily, hindi naman siya, hindi naman dumudugo yung yung pag nag-shave ka. Even though na, may nasasalay kang shave na cell layers each time you shave. Because a vascular yung ating skin. So, um, most of the epidermis are keratinocytes or your keratin cells. And they produce your keratin. This is a fibrous protein that makes the epidermis a tough protective layer. So, yan. The more na exposure to friction, yan, kumukubal ka. So, next is your, um, tawag niyan, epidermis. Your epidermis. Oh, wait. Next is, we also have a stratum germinativum. So, this is the, Wait, hold on. So, this is the deepest layer of the epidermis that lies closest to the dermis. So, no, parang may missing, may missing text dito. So, ang alternate name ng basale. Ito yun siya, basale. Yan, oh. Because it's the deepest layer of the epidermis. Diba? That lies closest to the dermis. So your stratum basale, its alternate name is your stratum germinativum. 
It's the deepest layer of the epidermis that lies closest to the dermis and contains most adequately nourished of the epidermal cells and they're con constantly dividing. So, um, they are constantly dividing not to produce new cells. So, epidermis. So, the cells become flatter and increasingly full of keratinized as they move away from the dermis. So, habang papalayo sila sa ating dermis, yung cells natin, napapansin nyo, nagiging flatter siya. And they are increasingly full of keratin. Habang palayo sa dermis, kasi syempre, ito na yung outside world. So, kailangan keratinized na siya. To, para ma-fulfill na yung job to protect. So, and as the cells leave the stratum granulosum, they die forming the clear stratum lucidum. So, um, this latter epidermal layer is not present in all skin regions. No? So, si Lucy, hindi siya, hindi siya nakikita sa lahat ng skin regions. So, they only occur when the skin is hairless and extra thick. So, they're only found in your thick skin, the palm of the hands, and soles of the feet. So, ayan. So, ito naman, stratum corneum. No? May something wrong dito na PowerPoint. It should have a, ano, sige, let's add. Let's insert a text box. So, this is your, this is your stratum corneum. Your stratum corneum, it's 20 to 30 cell layers thick, accounts for about three-fourth of the epidermal thickness. So, nakikita nyo, halos three-fourth siya. It has cortified or horny cells, dead cell remnants, completely filled with keratin. And yung keratin, this is an exceptionally tough protein that allows the layer to provide a durable overcoat for the body. Since yun nga, siya yung nasa bus exposed sa outside world. So, kailan meron siya, it's very keratinized para ma-fulfill niya yung job niya na to protect. Okay, so yan, screenshot niya na lang. Let's fix this. So, si ito, ano to? Stratum lucidum. Si Lucy, hindi sa thick skin mo lang makikita. Yan. And ito, Ito. Ito, si stratum basale to. Okay, si stratum basale. Ayan. So, next is your melanin. So, melanin is a pigment that ranges in color from yellow to brown to black and is produced by a special spider-shaped cells called your melanocytes. They are found chiefly in your stratum basale when the skin is exposed to sunlight, no? Nagsistimulate sila, ng uh, melanocytes, nagproproduce sila ng more melanin pigment. That's why nagiging shade darker yung skin mo. Umin umitim tayo. So, as the, mela as the melanocytes produce melanin, it, accumul it accumulates within them in a membrane brown granules called your melanosomes. So, these granules then move to the end of the melanocyte spidery arms where they taken up by nearby keratinocytes. So, inside the keratinocytes, this melanin forms a pigment umbrella over the superficial or sunny side of their nuclei and shields their genetic material from the damaging effects of the UV radiation of sun. So, diba? It's more healthy if your if your melanocytes are working. Kasi, naproprotect ka sa UV radiation ng sun. So, that's why, no, yung mga kano, yung mga white people, they are more prone to skin cancers, Kasi, they are yung, they are genetically you know they are genetically white so tayong mga pinoy 
since bas nag-work ang ating melanocytes, no? Bas morena tayo, bas protected tayo from the sun. So, next is your epidermal dendritic cells. These are important in alerting and activating the immune system cells to a threat such as bacterial or viral invasion. So, this is for immune, your immune system. Your Merkel cells, they are found in your epidermal dermal junction. And they are associated with sensory nerve endings and serve as tough receptors and they are called Merkel disc. Next is a dermis na tayo. So, your dermis... Um, what makes up your dermis is your dense connective tissue and we have your papillary layer ito, diba? tapos na tayo dito sa epidermis dito na tayo sa dermis next is your papillary layer and your reticular layer so yung dalawa na yan they, that compose your dermis your papillary layer is your upper dermal region diba? it is uneven and has peg-like projections from its superior surface called the dermal papillae. Yan. And your reticular layer, it's the deepest skin layer. And it contains irregularly arranged connective tissue fibers such as blood vessels. Dito mo na makikita yung mga blood vessels, sweat and oil glands, and deep pressure receptors called your lamellar corpuscles. Your collagen fibers naman, it's responsible for the toughness of your dermis. They attract and bind water para magiging hydrated yung skin mo. And your elastic fibers, of course, they give your skin its elasticity. Yan. Next is the structure of the skin color. So, yan. We have discussed this melanin, melanin that is... Um, that contributes to your yellow, reddish, brown, or black in the epidermis. Your carotene, that's um, the amount of carotene, I think, deposited in your stratum corneum and subcutaneous tissue. No? you um, That's orange-yellow pigment plentiful in your carrots and other orange, deep yellow, or leafy green vegetables. So the skin tends to take on a yellow-orange cast when the person eats large amount of carotene-rich foods. Next is your oxygen-rich hemoglobin pigment. That's a pigment in your red blood cells in thermal blood vessels. Next is we have your appendages of the skin. So appendages, they arise from the epidermis. So have your cutaneous glands, your hair, and nail follicles, and your nails. So all of these, no, they play a unique role in maintaining the body homeostasis. So, first is we have your cutaneous gland. So, all exocrine glands, they release their secretion to the skin surface via something what we call as ducts. So, they form by the cells of the stratum basale and they push into the deeper skin regions and ultimately reside almost entirely in the dermis. So, you have your sebaceous glands and your sweat glands. So, your sebaceous Simaceous glands, ito yung, ito yung ating oil glands. So, nakikita, nakikita natin to all over our skin. Except sa ating palms and soles of the feet. Pa, napapansin nyo ba nag-oil yung ating kamay? Hindi naman. Yung palms, di ba? At saka yung soles. So, walang sebaceous glands doon. So, sebum, sebum, ito yung, ito yung pinuproduce ng sebaceous gland. And it's a mixture of oily substances and fragmented fragmented cells. So actually, this is a lubricant that keeps the skin soft and moist and prevents your hair from becoming brittle. So, contains chemicals that kill bacteria. So, syempre, pag masyado namang oil ang skin natin, medyo diba, it's for others, it's not pleasant to the eyes. So, ayan, diba, medyo madaming mga, tawag niyan, mga products, para hindi masyado oily. So, next is your sweat glands. This is also called your sudoriferous glands. It's widely distributed in the skin. So, your eccrine glands, they are more numerous and are found all over your body. So, this is the one nagpo-produce ng pawis. That's pH from 4 to 6. And it's a clear secretion that is primarily water plus some salts, vitamin C, traces of metabolic waste, and lactic acid. So, 
Next is your apocrine glands. So, yung apocrine mo, nasa, nara na sa imong ilok o sa imong genital areas of the body. So, usually, bus, they are larger than the eccrine glands and their ducts empty into hair follicles. So, yung mga sinisikrit nito, it contains fatty acids and proteins. And they have a milky or yellowish color and it's odorless. Pero, no, their secretion is... Um, wait. Their secretion is odorless. Pero, di ba, nasa armpit and general genital areas of the body. So, ano yan? Di ba, medyo naiipit na parts ng body. So, syempre, pag yung bacteria nandoon sa skin and ginagamit nila yung proteins and fats doon, yung sa sinisikrit ng apocrine glands as source of nutrients for your growth. Kaya bumabaho yung armpit mo, di ba? Medyo unpleasant na yung odor. It's because yung bacteria na nagdoon, they feed on those secretions na sinisikrit ng apocrine glands. Kaya, di ba, may mga iba, may mga putok, ganyan. Next is your hair. So, again, your hair is produced by a hair. Uh, a flexible epithelial structure produced by a hair follicle. So, you have your parts, your root, that's the part of the hair enclosed in the follicle, your shaft, a part protecting from the surface of the scalp or skin, your medulla, that's the central core in each hair, your cortex, a bulky layer that supports the medulla. Your cuticle, the one, is the outermost layer that encloses the cortex. And it's formed by a single layer of cells that overlap one another. It's the most heavily keratinized region. It provides strength and keeps help the inner hair layers tightly compacted. And it tends to wear away at the tip of the shaft. No, that's yan yung sa ating mob girls, di ba? Mayroong split, split ends because it tends to wear away dun sa dulo ng shaft. So your hair follicles you have um, an epidermal sheath, no? an inner layer composed of epithelial tissues and forms the hair. Your dermal sheath, it's the outer dermal connective tissue, supplies blood vessels to the epidermal portion and reinforces it. Your papilla, is a nipple-like that, produce, that provides the blood supply to the matrix in the hair bulb. And you have your erector, erector pili, yan yung to, Yan yung um, riser of hair. It's a small band of smooth muscles that connect um, each side of the hair follicle to the permanent tissue. Actor Pila, ito yung responsible pag nag-goosebumps tayo. Um, pag to, ano yan, pag mutaas at tong balahibo every time na is something scary or gibugnaw ta. So, this is the one that's responsible for that. Your erector pili. Next is your nails. So, nails is mostly a non-living material. It's a scale-like modification of the epidermis. And it's transparent and nearly colorless. But they look pink because of the rich blood supply in the underlying um, dermis. So, you have your free edge. Those are your parts. Your free edge. Your body, which is a visibly attached portion. Your root, which is embedded in the skin. You have your nail folds. That's the skin that folds the overlap. The borders of the nail, your cuticle, that's the edge of the thick proximal nail fold, your stratum basale of the epidermis extends beneath the nail as the nail bed, your nail matrix, there are thick and proximal areas responsible for nail growth. Ayan, so just refer to the picture. Okay. At saka itong lunul. Actually, I'm not sure how to, how to read this. It's lunul eh. Lunul, I forgot. But, yan yung moon, di ba? Nakikita niyo sa yung nails. That's um, the region over the thick and nail matrix that appears as a white crescent. So, homeostatic imbalance of your skin. So, burns, di ba? Burns is a tissue damage and cell that caused by intense heat, electricity, ultraviolet radiation, or certain chemicals which denature proteins and causes cell death in the affected areas. So, the body loses its precious supply of fluids containing proteins and electrolytes. So, dehydration, electrolyte imbalance, shutdown of the kidneys, and circulatory shock. 
So infection, this is the most important threat and is the leading cause of death in burn victims. So um, it should be sterile for about 24 hours. And actually, yung patient's immune system, they are really depressed within one to two days after a severe burn injury. So, yan. So, we have your partial, partial thickness burn and your full thickness burn. Your partial thickness burn, again, classify burns according to your severity. I, I know you've heard this before. So, your first degree burn only the epidermis is damaged and the area becomes red and swollen with temporary discomfort not usually serious they gen generally heal in two to three days without any special attention your second degree burn it's the injury to the epidermis and the upper region of the dermis skin is red and painful and blisters appear when blisters appear you know Regrowth of the epithelium can occur, pero pwede pa to, no permanent scars result if care is taken to prevent infection. Your third degree burn, that's already a full thickness burn. That destroys the entire thickness of the skin. Yung area, they appear blanched, no, gray, white, or nagbal-black na siya, and the nerve endings are actually destroyed. Mau na, dili na siya sakit. So, re regeneration is not possible and kailangan na talaga mag skin graft. Skin grafting is when you get, um, when you get, you get, you get um, skin tissues from other parts of your body and it's tinatapal, tinatapal natin. So, burns um, over, ano, in percentage, in percentage, ay, no, this is not presented. So, in general, may kulang-kulang dito. consider natin ang burns na critical if any of the following condition exists. So, first, if over 25% ng body mo has second degree burn or over 10% of the body has third degree burn. So, or... Kahit hindi 10%, pero yung third degree burn mo nasa face, hands, or feet. So, we consider the, that case as, as critical. So, for infections and allergies, so first is we have athlete's food, no? Kikita natin to always. We also call that as tinea pedis. It's an itchy red peeling condition of the skin between the toes. It's an itchy red peeling condition of the skin between the toes resulting from fungus infection. Next is your boils and carbuncles. So it's the, that's the inflammation of your hair follicles and sebaceous glands common in dorsal neck. And composite boils typically caused by your bacteria, your Staphylococcus aureus. And your cold sores, those are small fluid field, uh, fluid field blisters that each and sting caused by a herpe herpes simplex infection usually occur around the lips and in the oral mucosa of the mouth. You have your contact dermatitis that is itchiness, redness, and swelling of the skin progressing to blistering. And this is because of allergy. Next is we have your impetigo. These are pink water-filled graze lesion commonly around sun, mouth, and nose. No? And they develop a yellow crust. And yung mga yellow crust na yan, eventually they rupture. And this is caused by a highly contagious staphylococcus, staphylococcus infection. Next is your psoriasis. Your psoriasis is a chronic condition characterized by overproduction of your skin cells that results in reddened and epidermal lesions covered with dry, silvery scales that each burn, crack, and sometimes bleed. So, actually, you know, we can see psoriasis that my friends are... This is actually more... Kita mo lang to sa yung mga kaibigan or mga classmates. So, ha, next is we have your carcinomas. So, first is your basal cell... Your basal cell carcinoma. This is the most common skin cancer. And it's the least malignant. So, this occurs mostly on sun-exposed areas of the skin and they appear as parang dome-shaped nodules that later develop a central ulcer with a purely beaded edge. It's slow-growing and metastatic and you, ano, 
pagiging meta um, metastasis seldom occurs before it is not noticed. Next is your squamous cell carcinoma. They arise from the cells of your stratum spinosum. So they appear as scaly red and papule, small rounded invasion that gradually forms a shallow ulcer with a firm raised border. So this is most often seen on your scalp, ears, dorsum of the hands, and lower lip, and grows rapidly and metastasizes to adjacent lymph nodes, if not removed. Also believed to be sun induced. That's why the ba sunscreen sunscreen is very important, especially sa mga kano, because they don't have hindi sila masyadong um, yung melanocytes na hindi masyadong nagpaproduce ng melanin to protect them that's why puti lang sila so your malignant melanoma this is the cancer of your melanocytes and they arise from the accumulated DNA damage in a skin cell and usually appears as a spreading brown to black patch and actually this is meta this metastasize rapidly to surrounding lymph and blood vessels Actually, I don't know if this updated, but we we describe you no know, in the clinics we describe um melanoma through its asymmetry, border irregularity, color diameter, and E for elevation. So therapy uh, to treat this, you no, know, we do wide surgical excision along with immunotherapy. So that is it for your skin and body membranes. Have a great day.